Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo, and in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the best smart home apps you can use with your Apple Watch. As always, if you prefer a more detailed written version, head on over to techtechmoretech.com or check the link in the description just below that like button. If you're using an Apple Watch, chances are you also use HomeKit. From the apps I've tested, most functionality will be with the apps that utilize HomeKit, but there are also some others that work well that I'll go over. Kicking things off, I'll start with the default Home app. It's very simple in that it lists all of your devices and scenes, starting with the favorites and then eventually just showing everything. I like that at the very top you've got the intercom feature and that each device can be fully controlled, meaning you can change the brightness and even color of your lights, for example, as opposed to just toggling it on or off. What I'm not too fond of is the fact that the icons are enormous, so scrolling through dozens of devices takes a while and there's no way of changing the order in which they appear. They're in the same order as on your phone, but because they are shown in a list view and not a grid view, that muscle memory of where your device is isn't there. I would much prefer if you could sort by room or even by type or even just alphabetically. The home app complication is also just an app shortcut, so you can't set any scene or device complications to quickly toggle on your watch face. I wish it would at least give us the option of intercom functionality as a complication, just like there is with the walkie talkie functionality. Next up is the app Home Run. Home Run actually gives us some customizations and use out of the Apple Watch face component. The app itself will show whichever scene you want. All the customization is done on the iPhone app, so you can select which scenes will show up in the Apple Watch for quick access. The complications are pretty cool though. Again, they are configured in the phone app, but they have lots of options. Firstly, you can configure the time slot of the complication, what it does, and what it looks like. So, for example, between 10 and 12, you can have a certain action that has a certain look, and then from 12 to 5, you can have a different icon with a different action. Certain watch faces can even have two complications at the same time, and they're connected to two different scenes. It's definitely very versatile, especially for those that don't rely much on automations and prefer to trigger scenes manually. Next is probably the most powerful app, and that is called Risk Control. It's brand new and it's a standalone app just for the Apple Watch, meaning there's no iPhone counterpart. The developer posted it in the HomeKit subreddit just a couple days ago and immediately got my attention. There are three pages to the app, scenes, favorites, and all. You can customize how everything looks between a list and grid view, even for each page individually. And then you can also choose the icons for each device or each scene. This is great as it gives you a ton of customization options beyond that of just the home app. One of the best features of this app is the ability to set individual scenes as complications. So if you have lots of scenes with different colored lights and stuff, this app is gonna be well worth the $1.99 price tag. There's no other app that I've tested that is this good in terms of functionality. So kudos to the developer. If you have lots of Hue apps, I would highly suggest checking out the iConnect Hue app. Even on your iPhone, this app brings a ton of extra functionality to your Hue lights, from different lighting effects to extra features and accessories and more. They offer a $2 in-app purchase that gives you the ability to control lights via voice command, though Siri already does this, so I don't know what this does differently. You can also switch single groups, change group brightness and color, load your scenes and magic scenes, and start sleep timers via force touch. This does sound like a decent amount of functionality, especially for an Apple Watch app, especially if you already use iConnect Hue. It did take me a couple of tries to get it working, but eventually it just involved me restarting both my phone and my watch. But once it worked, all the features were there. It's actually quite impressive how much you can do from there. No complications are available beyond just triggering the app though, which is kind of a bummer. My favorite is probably the sleep timer, as it's not a common feature anywhere, but force touching the app does give you the ability to quickly shortcut to a minute, five minute, 10 minute uh, sleep timer for your lights. And lastly, I'll touch on shortcuts. Shortcuts aren't strictly smart home oriented, but they can easily involve smart home components, so I'll include them. Shortcuts give you the ability to trigger a series of actions all at once, which is very useful and very powerful within the app. The majority of the features are limited if you want to do them via automation, which is kind of a bummer, 
meaning you have to trigger them manually each time. The Shortcuts app on the Apple Watch gives you just a list view of all your different shortcuts, which isn't too special, but it is nice. What is nice is that each shortcut can be a complication on Apple Watch face. So if you have a shortcut that you use all the time but still need to trigger it manually, having it right on your watch face may be the quickest way to do that. And there you have it, five different smart home Apple Watch apps. I would highly suggest checking them all out. There are plenty of other apps out there which I discussed in the longer written version of this on the website, but honestly, most of them can only activate scenes which I didn't find particularly impressive and not really video worthy. If you happen to know of any smart home apps on Apple Watch that you think I should check out, let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe button for plenty more videos to come. And until next time, see ya.